Welcome to Countart. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the perpetual inventory system, which is a system that records the movement of inventory continuously. In the description below, you'll see a link to a lesson on the periodic inventory system. So be sure to check that one out. But in this lesson, as we look at the perpetual inventory, we'll see how to record the movement of inventory using the journal entry. So what does the perpetual inventory do? The perpetual inventory system updates inventory accounts after each transaction. The ledgers relating to inventory is also updated after each transaction, and the volume of inventory is updated continuously, hence the name continuous inventory system or perpetual inventory system. So let's look at two examples. Let's start with an example on purchases of inventory and how to record it using the journal entry. The first example tells us that 50 units of inventory at 10 rand per unit were purchased on cash on the 5th of November 2018. So what is the general entry for the purchase of inventory? Well, we know that our debit will be inventory because we are receiving inventory, which is an asset. And the amount there is 50 units times 10 rand per unit, which gives us a total of 500 rands. And it tells us that we also purchased the inventory on cash. So we credit cash or bank because money is leaving our bank account. It gives us 500 rand as well. And that's how you record the purchase of inventory using the perpetual inventory system. So let's now look at how we record the sales of inventory using the same inventory system, which is the perpetual inventory system. It tells us that 30 units of inventory at 20 rand per unit were sold on cash on the 7th of November 2018. So we just sold inventory. How do we record it? Well, the first one that we record is the bank because we're receiving cash as it tells us. And how much is the amount? Well, it's 30 units times 20 rand per unit, which gives us a total of 600 rands. And then our credit side, what will we credit? We'll credit sales because it's an income or revenue of 600 rand as well. And then we have a second journal entry using the perpetual inventory. This is how it works. We record the second journal entry relating specifically to inventory itself. So what will we debit? Well, we'll debit an expense, which is called cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold or goods or cost of sales. And our debit there will be how much was the inventory worth that we sold. So we just sold 30 units. How much did we buy each unit for? We bought each unit for 10 rand, as it tells us over here. So that. 30 units times 10 rand gives us a total of 300 rand. And then what is our, cre our credit? Our credit would obviously be inventory because inventory is leaving our business and it's an asset. So we credit it with 300 rand. So we can see that we just recorded the transactions as they took place, both for the purchase of inventory and for the sale of inventory. Always remember that with the perpetual inventory system, when we sell inventory, we have two journal entries. One for the, for the, for the sale of the inventory and two for the, for the cost of sales of the inventory. And that is exactly how we record it using the perpetual inventory system. So like I said, we have another lesson on the periodic inventory system and it tells us how we record both the purchase and the sale of inventory using the, perpetual, uh, the periodic inventory system. So check that out to be able to contrast between the two. Hope that has helped. If you have any question, you can comment below. Till next time, cheers.